The FTX situation just got much worse and billions of dollars are now hanging in the balance. It's so big that even the White House has addressed it. Recent new news further underscores uh, these concerns and highlights why uh, prudent regulation of cryptocurrencies is indeed needed. Wow. Now I'm going to try to explain all of what just happened in the last 24 hours. The swirling rumors, the doomers, and the bloomers. Wait, I'm sorry, the Bloomberg allegations. And everyone else's allegations too. Because when something this big happens, it becomes difficult to sort through what is provably true and what is sort of speculation. So where I can, I'll be telling you what I'm sure about and what I'm not. And I'm even gonna share some insider knowledge I learned from an Alameda Research employee who leaked a lot of interesting information to me. So let's get into this. But first, hello from the future, guys. Uh, it's a quick interruption to this video to say that a lot has happened in the last 24 hours while editing this, and a lot of the information has changed. The story, like, just basically kept going. And so I've made an entire extra video attached to the end of this one covering the latest information. Um, please forgive me, I haven't slept a lot. Buckle up, though, because there's stolen billions, romantic affairs, flights to Argentina, possibly. But for now, just enjoy a much more well-rested CoffeeZilla, and I will see you in a bit. Last time we spoke, FTX, one of the biggest crypto exchanges in the world, was in deep trouble. And their biggest competitor, Binance, was planning to buy them out for a bailout. Now, initially, this was believed to be a short-term issue only for FTX. CZ, their competitor, called it a significant liquidity crunch. This basically means FTX had the money, just they didn't have it right now. To make an analogy, imagine I owed you cash but only had gold. That's a liquidity crunch. I can't just give you gold, I have to go sell it first. But crucially, I have the money, it's just locked up. Now, depending on how hard it is to immediately sell, this small issue can turn into a very big one, which FTX figured out when $5 billion in withdrawals came in one day and they just didn't have the money. And so that's what this buyout was all about. Binance stepped in and said, hey, we'll cover their short-term issue in exchange for buying out their long-term assets for pennies on the dollar, which is a pretty brilliant move when you consider that Binance's CEO kind of caused the whole problem in the first place. But if you wanna know more about that, you can go watch our last video. However, I told you guys in that video that this buyout was kind of shaky at best because it was non-binding, which meant at any point, Binance could just walk away if they didn't like what they saw. And that's exactly what happened. Binance recently said they're walking away from the deal and that the reason was based around latest news reports regarding mishandled customer funds and alleged US agency investigations. And this absolutely ruined FTX's credibility overnight because all of a sudden the conversation around FTX turned from liquidity crunch to insolvency and fraud. Because look, there's a big difference between the two. Liquidity issues is when I don't have the cash for you right now, but I have the assets somewhere. Insolvency is when I don't have the cash and I have nothing else either. So if FTX was illiquid, it's a great deal. If FTX is insolvent, it's a nightmare, which is why a lot of people thought Binance backed out of the deal with both Bloomberg and the Wall Street Journal reporting a multi-billion dollar shortfall. Now, Binance responded to this saying that the issues are beyond our control or ability to help. And this is very bad news for FTX. It's bad news for all of crypto because your average investor is about to get wrecked. Not only that, the CEO, Sam Bankman fried may be in a lot of trouble because it turns out he was lying to everyone when he said that FTX is fine and that FTX had funds to cover all client holdings. He said this basically minutes before disaster. Now, he has since deleted those tweets, which might be a good idea because they probably are criminal. But we'll get back to that in a second, because first, I want to go back to Binance's earlier statement about mishandled customer funds. What did they mean by that? And how can a crypto exchange as big as FTX become insolvent? It's, it's like hearing that a casino went insolvent. It's like, how did you guys lose money? You win no matter what. These crypto exchanges make money on the fees. Whether you win or not, whether it goes up or down, they're making money. So how could you have lost billions of dollars as one of the biggest crypto exchanges? That's the question. And this is where Alameda Research comes in. So as a quick explanation, SPF's empire is actually incredibly complicated like way more complicated than even complicated firms. Like this has been compared to the Lehman Brothers. Well, the Lehman Brothers corporate structure is way simpler. SBF's web of companies is really difficult to untangle. But really, there are two companies that matter the most. 
Alameda Research, and FTX. FTX is the crypto exchange we've talked about, and Alameda Research is a small trading firm. Now, these two companies, though they're technically distinct entities, have always been sort of unusually close. Some have speculated unethically close, but their CEO claims that indeed they are separate entities. But with FTX seemingly becoming insolvent, that relationship is now under scrutiny. And it turns out they may have shared more than an office. They may have shared information and also been sharing client funds. And this is where this whole mishandled client funds allegation comes in because FTX told users that their digital assets belong to them and wouldn't be traded. It's explicitly laid out in their terms of service. Quote, you control the digital assets in your account. FTX trading does not represent or treat digital assets in users' accounts as belonging to FTX trading. And title to your digital assets shall at all times remain with you. But turns out this wasn't the case at all, because according to an Alameda research employee who came to me anonymously, apparently they had more access to FTX than previously disclosed. In fact, not only did they have access to FTX's back end, they managed withdrawals for FTX and had a giant line of credit that they could draw on which seems like partially may have been users' funds, something that no separate entity would normally have. Now, bear in mind, that is coming from one employee, but it's backed up by another source, the Wall Street Journal, who reported that FTX extended loans to Alameda using money that customers had deposited on the exchange for trading purposes which they just said they wouldn't do. Quote, it was a decision that Mr. Bankman Freed described as a poor judgment call. But I would disagree with Mr. Sam Bankman Freed. I would not describe that as a poor judgment call. A poor judgment call is showing up to a Zoom meeting looking like this. When you take clients' funds and do exactly what you told them you would not do with them, that's theft and that is fraud. Now, I know this is already all insane, but we've only explained sort of half the story, how clients' funds were being used by Alameda. But how were they lost? Because new reports show that Alameda may owe FTX $10 billion. How did they lose that 10 billion? Because these were supposed to be the crypto geniuses, right? Well, this is unfortunately where we have to kind of get a mix of facts and speculation. As I said, I'm gonna tell you guys what we're sure about, what we're not. So losses likely come from four places that I've heard about. Uh, number one is just FTX themselves spending insane amounts on advertising with stadiums, Tom Brady, and a crazy number of YouTube influencers who apparently were shilling FTX. The second place they likely lost money was that Alameda invested heavily into FTT tokens and a lot of their own projects, which when FTX went down, basically went to zero or at minimum couldn't be sold very quickly. The third way they lost money was that Sam Bankman fried tried to bail out all of crypto in the summer. People like BlockFi, Voyager Digital, Skybridge Capital, which led to huge losses. And then when Alameda found itself with big losses around the time of a lot of these companies collapse, number four, Alameda took out a $4 billion line of credit from FTX, a $4 billion loan, essentially. And what did they give FTX in return to back up this money? FTT tokens and Robinhood shares. Guys, which the FTT tokens is the crazy part because FTX, that's their token. So th it's basically giving nothing. This is all according to Reuters and, and it's just insane. Many financial commentators are, are calling this dark magic, but I think Matt Levine of Bloomberg put it best. He says it's possibly illegal and it's like a bank lending a lot of money against its own stock. The problem obviously being that if you face a liquidity crunch or people lose confidence in you, then these FTT co tokens go to zero and now your clients aren't backed. So um, it, it's, it's extremely risky behavior at the best. And like he said, possibly illegal. I'd say probably illegal. So it was this incestuous relationship between FTX and Alameda that led to their downfall. And while we don't know the full extent of their losses and what is just they can't find the liquidity right now, uh, estimates right now are going from billions to $10 billion at the highest I've seen, which is just wild. And I feel so bad for the victims here. But I find the collapse unbelievably ironic in all of this because SBF was lecturing Congress about how crypto exchanges were so much better than the traditional financial system. In 2008, it was unregulated. It was so risky, but it turns out he was doing all of the same things. 
Last thing that I'll say is if you look at what precipitated some of the 2008 financial crisis, you saw a number of bilateral bespoke non-reported uh, transactions happening between financial counterparties, which then got repackaged and re-leveraged again and again and again, such that no one knew how much risk was in that system until it all fell apart. If you compare that to what happens on FTX or other major cryptocurrency venues today, there's complete transparency about the full open interest. There's complete transparency about the positions that are held. There is a robust, robust, consistent risk framework applied. And we're excited to work with the CFTC on our uh, U.S licensed and regulated venue. Yikes. Does the phrase bespoke non-reported transactions happening between financial counterparties, which then got repackaged and repackaged again and again to such an extent that no one knew how much risk was in the system? Does that sound familiar to anyone? Because it sounds exactly like what SPF did. You know, the only difference between SPF and these banks, which he says were so bad, was that SPF preached us how good he was. He was the generous billionaire. The guy you see next to me is the most generous billionaire in the world. Well, I guess that was a lie. But we still kind of have to answer the final question to all of this, which is that it seems like obviously they're insolvent, but how much of it is insolvency versus liquidity squeeze? We're still figuring that out, to be honest. Um, SBF, even after making a thread today, admitting that he effed up and he should have done better, still claims that FTX has assets that are higher than their clients' deposits. Basically saying they are solvent still, kind of. But honestly, I think this is almost definitely another lie from Sam Bankman-Fried, given that A, we know that a lot of their assets are in illiquid tokens like FTT, which their that real value is probably zero. And also B, well, this guy has already proven himself to be a liar and we shouldn't trust him. So I just default to assuming that he's lying. Uh, my guess is they're insolvent by at least a few billion, maybe the full 10 billion. We don't know. SBF is now seeking to raise 9.4 billion in an emergency fundraise, which I think speaks volumes to that. I don't think they'll get it. Brian Armstrong of Coinbase has said, I don't know why investors would put money into this now, uh, <laughs> which is a nice way of saying, I don't know why anyone put money into this ever. Uh, but not everyone, though, seems skeptical. Amazingly, there still are some believers. Bill Ackman, for example, believed SBF's apology. In a now-deleted tweet, he responds that you have to give SBF credit for his accountability here. I have never seen a CEO take responsibility as he does here. It reflects well on him and the possibility of a more favorable outcome for FTX. But what accountability is he talking about? I don't see that at all. SBF is explicitly dodging responsibility about his criminal lies about reserves. Remember, we talked about how he said, you know, assets are fine. We have the full amount to clever cover client deposits. But now look at his new accounting of events, because what he says now is that he messed up and mistakenly thought that they had zero leverage and 24x the needed liquidity. In reality, he says he was wrong and that they were leveraged 1.7x and didn't have the necessary liquidity. And look, at first glance, I understand why that would appear like he's taking you know, responsibility here until you realize that what he's really telling you is that he sucks at his job. Because how can you not know as the CEO, as this genius, how levered up you are? You know, you're this genius trader. Isn't it awfully convenient that you're suddenly bad at your job when it would be criminal if you actually knew? Because those are the two options. If he had known he was lying, that's criminal. So he's basically saying, well, I didn't know. I, I was just wrong. I'm just terrible at my job. And I'm just not buying that. My opinion of it is this. SBF is a shark who knowingly put his own customers' funds at risk to save his trading firm, Alameda Research. He did this without telling them while giving them worthless FTT tokens as collateral, which he knew was risky. He then lied about it right up until the last possible moment. And when it finally came out that what he did was likely criminal, he goes, oh, oops, I didn't know that things were so bad. It's ridiculous. And anyone who believes this, well, I have a multi-billion dollar crypto exchange to sell you. Anyways, he ends this thread by saying that Alameda Research is winding down trading. And he also addresses CZ of Binance, saying, at some point, I might have more to say about a particular sparring partner, so to speak but you know, glass houses. So for now, all I'll say is well played, you won. Which just strikes me as so weird of a statement. He talks about this as if it's a sparring partner, as if it's all a game. This is not a game to be won and lost. This is billions of dollars of people's real money that you just lost. Correction, 
He might have stolen it, or maybe one of his executives did, or a hacker did. We don't know for sure. Welcome to the future. It sucks here. Guys, as I said, a lot has changed, and I want to cover it. Uh, for one, SBF declared Chapter 11 bankruptcy for all his companies, including FTX US, which he said was fine, and many influencers promoted. Uh, see this video for more, but it basically looks like they're all in deep trouble. Even worse, news around Alameda has gotten much more dire. See, originally we thought this team was a bunch of geniuses in crypto. Now it's coming out they were more like a gang of kids who all dated each other. This report comes from Coindesk. Alameda employees were in romantic relationships with each other. And there's speculation that the CEO of Alameda, Caroline Ellison, became the CEO maybe because she dated Sam Bankman Freed. Incidentally, she also has been revealed to be a big fan of amphetamines, which is just not great when you're controlling billions of dollars. And it gets worse when you realize that SBF had secretly added a, quote, backdoor into FTX's bookkeeping system. This came out just recently, which allowed SBF to, quote, execute commands that could alter the company's financial records without alerting other people. In other words, this is how we believe Sam moved $10 billion in funds from FTX to Alameda without alerting anyone. Later, it was reported that among this $10 billion, some of it also went missing from even Alameda, with Reuters reporting that $1 to $2 billion are unaccounted for even among Alameda's assets, uh, which again, it just all looks so bad for SBF. And from here, things spiral even worse because once the dust started settling, you know, we thought, okay, we're going to get a clearer picture now that they're entering bankruptcy. But then they suddenly got hacked in addition to everything. On Telegram, their admin says, FTX has been hacked. All funds seem to be gone. FTX apps are malware. Delete them. This is just insane. How could this happen? Coindesk reported that the hacker got out $600 million. And I have to tell you that some numbers are slightly less than that, 400 million uh, from Slow Mist, for example. And this hack is being traced. So we don't know the full story right now, but it's a lot of money. So to state the obvious, this is very bad for FTX. And it also seems like pretty convenient timing for Sam, who has suddenly become unresponsive. So this fueled a lot of speculation. Now, Elon Musk decided to join the speculation, seeming to accuse Sam in a meme of being behind it all. He posted this, man Fs 5 million people at once, uh, which is a pretty good one. And basically this set off a frenzy of people frantically trying to unmask the hacker, eager to make it Sam or Caroline or even their CTO, Gary. For example, some people used the GitHub activity of Gary Wang to show that he did an unusual number of commits to his GitHub repo, basically saying he might have set up this sudden hack. And he did all this a day before FTX was hacked. And this for sure is very suspicious, but we need to be careful about rushing to conclusions. For example, Mario Nafal accused the hacker of being an inexperienced insider because some of the funds were traced back to Kraken. And so people thought the mystery was solved when a Kraken executive said, we know the identity of this user you guys pointed out. The problem was, is that it turned out there were actually two people who were operating at the time that this hack happened. The hacker and then the response team over at FTX. And the person using Kraken seems to have been the response team and not the hacker themselves. So it seems like a, a false identification there. So I get it. We all want to know who the hacker is, but uh, we can't jump to conclusions here. And I'm going to be try to be honest with you guys about what we know and what we don't. For now, let's just say the leading suspects are anybody at Alameda or FTX, and especially Sam himself, but we do not know for sure. Another thing we do not know, but people seem to be happy to claim as fact, is that SBF is fleeing the Bahamas and flying to Argentina. This could be true, we just do not know. Currently, the most tracked flight in the world is the one everyone suspects of being Sam, but we do not have concrete evidence. And that's gonna be the final bit of speculation we entertain here because uh, there's infinite theories about how all this happened. All we know is that FTX is massively in debt and users are unlikely to get their funds back because they sent a lot of it to Alameda and seem to have lost it somehow. The most recent report based on the bankruptcy filing shows FTX held less than a billion dollars in liquid assets against nine billion in liabilities. So this hole is just so bad at this point. And I think that was actually pre-hack. So the real story is likely a lot more grim. 
Um, and this has been a sad case study in trusting slick billionaires too quickly. And I think this story is only just getting started. Anyways, I hope that keeps you up to date and hopefully we can edit this thing before all of this information goes out of date in three hours. Thanks for watching and it's time for me to get some sleep.